Um, so please uh, come tonight. It'll be from 6, and the whole thing is supposed to be over about 7.30 tonight, okay? And we will have food, yes. We will have food, okay? Um, but, um, but not dinner, right? Snacks, yeah. I just thought I'd better say that. I don't see um, the better looking half um, to remind me of that, but I'm sure she'd want me to say, we're not feeding them dinner, we'll have snacks for everyone to enjoy. So, okay, and then um, Wednesday night we'll have our prayer meeting here in the church, or maybe outside if it's pretty, around a uh, um, fire pit. Um, we do that every once in a while now as well, so keep that in mind. I might, if you're someone who gets cold easy, might want to bring a sweater or something with you. Uh, just to, to do that every once in a while, okay? Christians of Men on Thursday and throughout the week, different times, uh, different ones of us will go to visit somebody. If you need someone visited, please let us know. We'll be glad to do so, okay? Then we have coming up uh, the hot dog roast um, at uh, 6 p.m. on October 3rd. And uh, we have a... Uh, um, Things that you can pass out in the back that are uh, pretty much along the lines of the teens' um, activities coming up. Hot ball roast October 3rd, teen bike and hike on October 4th, and hayride and harvest party on October 26th. Those are the things that we have for you already on the list, and there's a few of those back there in the back table. Um, so keep those things in mind. And then October 5th, in a couple Sundays from now, we'll start a new Soul Winter session where we're going to um, teach you a, a decent uh, a program for how to win others to the Lord, give you more confidence in doing that. Um, so we encourage you, if you haven't done one of those, maybe you should sit through that and enjoy that time together, okay, uh, as you learn that. The, the Sunday school hour. Right? It'll be in the Sunday school hour, and it'll be in the back room back here. Um, that time, okay. And then we have October 19th, a, a potluck baby shower for David and Jess. And uh, I apologize, I'm supposed to ask you guys to, to tell Terry um, where you might be uh, um, registered for the baby and that kind of stuff so that she can print any of those things for you. And I keep forgetting to do that, and I'm sure Terry is forgetting to ask you as well. So we just need you to put that in there. So. Yeah, let, let her know so she can take care of it for you, all right? Okay, and then um, Olympians and UK Rivalry talked about that. Uh, corn maze possibility coming up. And uh, also attentive church work day and cleanup. We had a similar one of those yesterday, but not the cleanup. Um, and if you haven't taken a moment to walk in and check out the... Uh, uh, the building so far to see the size and what's going to happen in there uh, with the bathroom. So looks pretty good already, doesn't it? Um, who would have thought three weeks ago we'd be this far? All right? <coughs> what a blessing. What a blessing. Yep. When, when Mr. Johnny gets on something, he can't stand to sit still. The, the other day, um, the other day, Friday, we were all supposed to come out on Saturday and, and start the building and on Friday he was waiting on something to show up and, and 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 when I went by he was putting up the third wall. And that was his waiting on something else to come. His, his waiting was three walls. It, yeah, you get the idea. <laughs> uh, I would like to ask um, someone else that was a cleaning day. I care responsibility. I got enough on the going on. Yeah, you're, you're doing enough right now. Yes, yeah. But Mr. Johnny and Ms. Mavis typically led the cleaning day. Um, and so if, if uh, someone else would like to step up and say we'd like to be uh, the ones who are responsible for making sure everything gets done. Um, and, you know, it's not that he wouldn't give you a list of some things that uh, he has on his mind, but uh, um, if you'd like to be in charge of that day, um, please um, see Mr. Johnny and volunteer for that so that we can uh, have a good cleaning day and uh, deal with some things, okay? All right? And that will be a good, good help, good show of um, concern for, for him considering that he is working the long hours and constant. I, I guarantee you that uh, he slept well last night because... I didn't work near as hard as him, and I, I slept well last night. So, 
Uh, yeah, absolutely. Any other announcements? Yes, ma'am? Uh, James and Sarah are expecting their child a week from tomorrow, but there are indications it could be sooner, and she has to have baby this week, so we'll put her All right, so to fit your schedule, the baby has to come this week. You want us to pray that way. All right, and the baby's due in a week plus, uh, just a little over a week, and um, so keep praying about that. Somebody else's announcement that's all on the other hand. The flowers are in memory of Bob. Okay. Okay. So flowers are in memory of, of Bob, and um, we thank you for placing those today. And uh, in memory of one of our uh, church members for many years. Anyone else? Little little uh, uh, study thing for you. Sunday night, of course, we don't have Bible study this week, and then next week we're going to jump into a new um, Bible study. Um, James is going to uh, be taking you down the road of, of teaching uh, dispensation and uh, what it means to be a dispensationalist. Um, many of you are, are dispensationalists and don't know it. Um, you, you probably have never heard such a thing, and he's going to teach you a little bit about it so that you can better understand uh, the revelation of Scripture. And that's the, the main purpose of what he's going to be doing for you, to teach you how to better understand how we got our Scripture and, and those type of things. And uh, he's real excited. Um, uh, adults, you ought to plan on coming. It's going to be about an eight-week course, unless he's something like me where he says eight weeks and he goes a lot longer, but I don't know. Uh, about an eight-week course um, for uh, you to, to come to. Plan on coming on Sunday nights. Uh, you won't want to miss this. He's been studying hard and long, and uh, he's, he's ready to go and excited to give this to you, okay? Um, so that'll be um, starting next Sunday night, not tonight. All right, I think I've done enough announcements. Um, let's have our band come and... Uh, us. Let's sing together, My God is a Righteous God, number 174. And uh, would you please um, stand with us and sing?
Joe, if he would take us before the throne. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us each day. We thank you for the ones that we do not thank you for at this time, but we take them for granted. We thank you for your Son, Jesus, who gave his life upon the cross to save us from our sins if we believe in him and confess him. We ask you to be with the number of those who are here this morning, for whatever the reason may be, for traveling, give the travelers mercy for not feeling well. We ask you as I will lay healing upon their soul. We ask you to be with those who are sick and in the hospital. God, direct them and be with those who have lost loved ones. We ask you to be with the crew that's working on the building. Give them safety and wisdom as they go forth, forth on the bathroom. We ask you to take these tithes and offerings to be used to glorify thy name. Say all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
time, we'll have uh, the Myers family come. attention 
and also you're 12 years old, you haven't come through their system and you're about to jump to a new level and so forth, so there, there's no sense in us really um, uh, taking a lot of time. So they didn't know who I was, but I made this all-star team and, and I was really excited um, because I love baseball and I really wanted to play. So we get out there and the first question that was asked by the coach is we're going to have a strong team, he says. We're going to have a strong team. We've got good pitching. I think we can hit, and I know we can field the ball. But the one thing I'm not sure about is who's going to catch. Have any of you caught before? I didn't raise my hand. I was nervous. I was scared. Can you ever see me not being bold? <laughs> I was nervous, and I was scared, and I didn't raise my hand. I didn't tell the coach I could catch. I love catching. Well, needless to say, even though a couple of practices later I mentioned to him that I could catch because I hadn't spoken up, he worked with that one kid and that was it. So we get into the All-Star Games and we're actually starting to play now and the, the catcher who did speak up, uh, I'm, I'm not trying to be mean, but he wasn't very good. Um, we could not stay in a game because he kept having pass ball after pass ball after pass ball. So as long as they get somebody on, on base, they'd automatically get second without even having to steal. They'd automatically get third without having to steal. And most of the time, they'd come in to score without having to steal. So just like the coach said, we scored, we'd be in games, we'd play defense. But if we didn't catch well, we were going to have a problem. But I didn't speak up. So I didn't get to catch. In fact, not only did I not get to catch, I didn't get to play. Until the very last game, once they realized that we've given up too many runs doing this, I get to play. And I didn't get to catch that. I was put in center field. And Marcel Spacey, a big kid on the other team that could really hit, hit a ball above the lights. My very first time, by the way, I'm not a center fielder. I was put in center field just to get me in the game. The ball went way high in the air, above the lights. Never played under lights before. Lost the ball in the lights, the ball landed way far away from me, the guy scored all the bases, I felt like an idiot, the entire all-star game. Everything I, I took part in was bad, but it burned me up sitting there and watching, knowing that the fact that I didn't have the confidence to speak up and say, I can catch. And I watched that kid over and over and over again, give away runs and have problems, it, it really it tore me up because I could have stopped all that. I, I could have handled all that. I could have done all that. But I didn't speak up. I didn't have the confidence to say, I can handle this, let me do it. I was afraid. There's some big boys on here and they can really throw. I don't know if I can catch that. And so my confidence kept me quiet made it to where I was afraid I'd be ashamed of my catching ability. And the end result is, I didn't play my first All-Star games. I played three, all except for one inning in the field and one inning at bat, which I promptly got a single, stole second, and stole third, and was ready to score. But the coach, he could say to himself, that was an aberration, that wasn't anything. How do I know the kid can play like that? Because I didn't have the confidence. Which again, like I said, the story that I told you a few weeks ago is the reason why I volunteered immediately to catch something that no one had ever caught because I was afraid I'd miss out again if I did that. So be bold, speak up, and go first. That's, that's the, the, the things that we did. Now as we're looking at this, I want you to see that God wants you to have confidence like that. He doesn't want us to always be drawn back and ashamed and worried and then the end result is, is we're not making the effects on the world that we should. We don't witness to people the way that we should. The reason why is because we don't have the confidence. We, we, some of us think that we need to have a, a, you know, an all-star setup in here, and he's going to be the one that witnesses. That's not what God wants. God wants you to witness. I'm here to help. You know, Other people are here to help, but God wants you to do it. He wants you to win your, your loved ones to the Lord and your neighbors. He wants you to do it. God also wants you to have the confidence to, to see what He's bringing your way in eternity and to live in, in, in light of it. 
So let's read the verse together here. These are not deep verses as it has been all the way through 1 John. Not a deep verse, but we're looking at verse 28 of chapter 2 of 1 John. It says, And now, little children, abide in Him. We've already talked about that, haven't we? To abide in Christ means to, um, to, to spend every moment with Him, to be attached to Him, to dwell in Him, okay? To dwell in Christ. And it says that when He shall appear, so when Christ returns, we may have confidence. And not be ashamed before him that is coming. What is the best way for us to have confidence? It's simple. Be in Christ. And realize what that does for you. Dwell in him. And be confident in what that brings your way. <coughs> you know, it's a shame that there are great, in essence, godly people who practice a different religion than what we're teaching. Who spend their lifetime serving God in heaven, <clears throat> living for Him, helping others, but have to say on their deathbed they hope they did enough to get in. Does that sound like confidence to you? No, it doesn't. You know what? God said that He wrote these things that we might know that we have eternal life. God wants us to know, be confident. He doesn't want us guessing and hoping. He wants us to know. There are many people out there, religions and such, that would tell you that it's unacceptable to do that. For instance, that's one of the things of the Amish. The Amish say that it's unacceptable for you to presume upon God that He's going to save you. It comes out of a certain type of theology, but... It really should come down to not a, it doesn't matter what, what, um, what we do, no. And not that we, we can't make a part of the decision, no. It should come down to, God said He'd save me if I trusted Him, and I have trusted Him, so I am what? I'm saved. Have confidence. And do it. But this is taking it past just the salvation. I don't know if you understand that. This is taking it past the salvation. But in our daily walk, if I want to face God confidently, I need to abide in Him. I need to let God be where I dwell, what I think on. And when I do, my confidence will be great. Confidence in what He is going to do, what He has achieved. Confidence. But instead, we end up ashamed. Why would we end up ashamed? Well, part of it's because we didn't dwell in Him. Part of it's because the devil convinced us of things that happened 25 years ago. And we let that ruin our confidence. Or maybe part of it's that you're in a new group. You have new people that are your neighbors. You just don't have the confidence to speak up. Folks, I'm not going to be it forever. I'm just telling you, abide in Jesus and have confidence. Then you won't be ashamed of His return. You won't be. <coughs> because it's that simple. If you'll take your sap from Jesus Christ, if you'll let Him be the one that feeds you, builds you, strengthens you, you can have the confidence that things are going to be good when it comes to Christ. But look at the second part here. The second verse is verse 29. It says, If ye know that he is righteous. Now, do we know that Jesus is righteous? Okay, so if we know that he is righteous, and since we do, it says, Ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. So in line with, he's going to return and going to come. Now, we are saved regardless of whether we do anything for the Lord or not, if we've accepted Him as our Savior, if we've believed. But folks, listen. If we know that He is righteous, what should be our natural result recognizing that He's coming soon? I'll tell you this. Think of it this way. When Amy goes on one of her trips to New York, if she comes in the door, and I have just thrown everything everywhere, when she comes in, what do you think that she feels? 
she went like this. <laughs> That's exactly right. So since I know that I have a wonderful wife who's coming home, what do I need to do? Prepare. What if I'm not sure what time she's coming home or when? I better stay prepared, right? Because I don't want her catching me off guard. And then here I am with the piles of the laundry and the piles of the dishes that's going to make her feel like, oh, just getting in the door and I got all this work to do because you didn't keep up with it. Let me ask you something. If God is righteous, and He is, then what should you be doing? Knowing that He could return at any moment. You should be prepared. Which means you ought to be well, let's define righteousness for a minute. What is righteousness? Righteousness is getting to the right result the right way. Many times we Christians think it doesn't matter how we get to the right result as long as we get there. And my wife has a favorite saying. I'm going to get myself in trouble now. Yes. <laughs> I tend to say that I have cleaned when I pick up and have everything put away. My wife says, no, that is picking up. <laughs> Cleaning is vacuuming and dusting. I hate dusting. <laughs> vacuuming and dusting and scrubbing floors and doing the necessities of the bathroom. And so on. that is cleaning. So don't tell me you clean when all you did was pick up. You know what? There are a lot of us spiritually. A lot of us spiritually who, who do the cleaning that I call cleaning, picking up everything and getting it all put away, but are, are, that are unwilling to clean in a righteous way. I'm just pointing out to you. It's a very simple message. He's coming. And at His coming, if you want to be what you ought to be, then abide in Him and be confident in Him. Be righteous like He is. And you're only going to do that if you're abiding in Him. So abide in Him, be confident, and be righteous. And when He returns, you're not going to say, Oh, I'm ashamed of what I've done. You won't. You, you'll be happy to see Him. And excited that they come in the door. Now there are times that I've made a valiant effort to get everything done. I'm not fiddled around, and I haven't made a big mess, but, and it's not that, I, I don't want you to think that my wife is very demanding, and that's not what I'm trying to say, but I want to please her, so I do things a certain way, okay? Um, and it's not like she'd scream at me if she came in the door and I had everything laying all over the place. I'm not saying she wouldn't be disappointed. Did you see her head come up when I said that? <laughs> but, the, the thing is, is, when you want to do something, you work hard. But there have been times I didn't make it. I was running everywhere, and I didn't make it by the time she came in the door. Now she's like, thank you, honey, for trying, and I'm disappointed. I let her down. Listen, if you don't want to be ashamed, get on it now. Stay on the job right now. And be what you ought to be in Christ because you're abiding in Him, dwelling in Him. Let Him change you. Take away the shame, make you confident, and help you to be righteous. God wants you to be like this because He wrote this book so you'd know. He's going to return soon. It mentions it twice in our little passage here. So how about it? Are you going to be like me a little guy on the bench, afraid because he's in a new league. He's only been around playing in this league for, for two, two, three months. Scared that, that no one's really paying attention to him and doesn't speak up and regrets it. Is ashamed of even being on that team because we played so horrible and it's my fault because I didn't speak up. Are you going to be that type of Christian? 
Are you going to have the confidence and stand up there and say, I'm dwelling in Jesus and whatever He wants I'm doing, so I'm in. Let's go. Will you have the confidence you should? Will you be righteous? Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. I told you, not a deep message today, not a hard message today, yet it's one that should really touch us. Well, this should remind me that the end is coming soon. Who knows when Christ is going to return? Are you prepared? If you're here today and you say, Pastor, I don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. Would you like to accept it? Would you please just raise your hand right where you are? Christians, as we sit here together, not a hard message, not going to keep pounding. Do you have the confidence that you should, or are there some things you need to change? Are you righteous like you should be, or are you only clean in the surface? Which God, God doesn't call real clean. Are you righteous? Maybe there's some things you need to give to the Lord. There's some things you need to change or give away to God today. The altar is open. You come.
uh, 5.30 for choir, 6 o'clock for going into the different rooms with the kids just to get a picture of what they're doing. And um, I don't know if Mr. Johnny would be interested in going out there. Some of you I, I know would love to just look in there and, and uh, let Mr. Johnny uh, give you a little bit of a look into the bathroom so you don't feel like you're not allowed because it's red on the outside. Just don't let the kids run around, okay? Um, but uh, Mr. Johnny will, will let you go in there. He'll open the door for you and everything if you'd like to go in and just walk around and see what all is happening in the bathrooms there, okay? Um, Mr. Hank, would you close the word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your encouragement that you want us to live all out for you, to be everything that you put in us in the first place. And we pray, Lord, that when we hold back, as we're not really trusting you, and not really spending enough time to, to know your will and be like you, that we are actually letting ourselves down, that we're not being all that you designed us to be. And we pray, Lord, that you forgive us, that we'll take her, and that we'll live all out for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.